by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, then you are going to decrease the conversion of testosterone to DHT. So the increased testosterone, for example, um, if you're on finasteride, a lot of times your testosterone will go up by 10%. Someone here says uh, they're talking about uh, taking something to reduce DHT. So they said if we're inhibiting DHT and then raise the testosterone, won't that just create more DHT to be dealt with? I suppose it, I, I believe the question is probably regarding 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. There are anti androgens. So there's androgen receptor antagonists. Um, and that's kind of a whole nother rabbit hole. But in general, there's not many individuals taking these androgen receptor antagonists. Um, and if there is, a lot of times they have like metastatic prostate cancer or whatnot, it's palliative. But um, by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, then you are going to decrease the conversion of testosterone to DHT. So the increased testosterone, for example, um, if you're on finasteride, a lot of times your testosterone will go up by 10%. Um, I guess they also may admit if you also simultaneously raise your testosterone levels like TRT, I'm not Perhaps. sure if they mean to 10%. And so if you start TRT, then it certainly will provide more substrate to be 5 alpha reduced. And if you do that, like let's say they're on injectable TRT, that's going to lower your SHBG and the change in SHBG will make total DHT look lower, but free DHT, which I think we're one of the few cl clinics that actually checks free DHT will be significantly higher, even if you start finasteride. So if you take, let's say an average person, hypogonadal individual, 50 years old, androgenic alopecia, wants to start finasteride, starts one mig, simultaneously starts TRT. Yes, their free DHT will likely be higher starting both of those two things at the same time. Yeah, I, I suppose you could create a, a case study like that where you sort of tread water with your DHT because you're changing a lot of variables around it. And then you don't tell your provider about any of these things and the DHT stays the same. Yep. All that being said, <laughs> this is mostly an esoteric question because as we've said many times, there is nothing special about DHT except that it binds the same androgen receptor more strongly. So again, back to the analogy of the door, some people's door is a metal door, some people's door is a hollow core, some people in between. If you're, uh, and that's just a lot about your CAG repeats. We've done many podcasts in the past about this. So the DHT would be strongly pushing on the door. So even with zero DHT, um, for most individuals, um, a lot of testosterone is more than enough to open that door in all the various tissues. So in this analogy, the, the finasteride is the big bad wolf and it depends on what your house is made of whether he's going to be able to blow it down yes it's a great analogy yeah but i, I think in this case study we concocted the trt plus finasteride i think the estradiol to dht ratio would potentially improve there so yeah. you may still get the you know hair results that this person was after mm -hmm. um and just with something like finasteride or dutasteride, there's a, a wide variation of how much that may increase someone's testosterone. Mm -hmm. That could be 5%. It could be as high as 20% looking at some studies. Yep. So it's the testosterone booster that you didn't know about. Yeah.